I mean, my dad's family uh, live in Birmingham. Um, that's where they're from. That's where he's from. So, I mean, about twice a year since I can remember, we'd drive up there. Um, I remember this one time stuck in a huge traffic jam I think we hadn't moved in about half an hour and I just remember my dad pulling into the hard shoulder and stopping the car and then he got us all out of the car and uh, we climbed over that little bit on the side of the road that's a thing, you know, like a kind of barrier. And um, walked into this grassy patch, just all reeds, really long, you know, hadn't been, hadn't been touched by anyone for a long time. And I couldn't see over the top of them, they were so long, we just kept walking and walking. At some point we stop and he just picks me up. being inside some giant concrete scribble. Huge grey rows all tangled up in the air. And we just stood there underneath them all. Moving through the rows of all the cars. Thousands of them like little pods. And I just remember thinking that in each one of those cars was at least one person going their own way for their own reasons. At some point my dad puts me down and we walk back to the car. The traffic's cleared up a bit now so we get in and continue up to Birmingham. of my dad and his big shiny face. I remember when I was doing it, two boys cycled over and asked what it was. I told them I was painting my dad and I think they'd thought it died, but it not anyhow. One of them asks if he can help, so I give him a brush and point to the eye. Fill that pupil there up with black, but watch for your clothes because the nose isn't dry. He stands on his tiptoes to reach it as the other throws stones at a can on the ground. Polish varka, reds faded pink. Stone hits with a great crunching sound. Really nice sound. waver in the mouth.
boy then finishes the eye and looks over back at his friend. Can we take him to the blue lagoon? You know that water thing down at the end. A drip falls down and hits my head as they beckon me forward, away from the spot. I leave the painting and follow to the reeds. The air is thick in this great British smog. They push through with the front of their bikes, boring lines like rats in a tunnel. The reeds then stop and clear in my mind. A bit of water in a perfect circle. There it is, the Buxton Blue Lagoon. But it's black, I say out loud. That's because the council dyed it that colour to make it less appealing for crowds. It lies ahead, stagnant and thick. About its depth, I can make no claims. But in the centre, floating like yolk, is a motorbike helmet covered in cartoon flames. It's just sitting there like a blob, you know? Like some yellow blob in the centre of this black lagoon. The bigger kid then picks up a stone and throws it into the water. The impact creates some ripples and the three of us watch as they move towards the helmet and wrap around it like the rings of Saturn. Eventually the ripples flatten into water, leaving just the helmet. The little boy then asks if we think a head could still be inside it. I don't say anything, but the other boy says it's best not to know. At some point I notice that the two boys have left. There's a big stick to my left, just long enough to reach the helmet, and I pick it up. I reach it as far forward as I can, leaning over the water and angle the tip just underneath, ready to flip it. And something stops me. And I decide not to. (laughs) 